All right, so today we're going to go over just a little bit of how you figure out what certain circuits uh, do when you're working on the same boards over and over again. I am back to the wired microphone. I'm hoping this sounds better. My wireless transmitter was actually dying for a while, and it finally ended with it just not having anything above 2 kilohertz, and I, I don't want to pay for a new one, and I also don't want to spend my time fixing a $100 wireless mic transmitter, to which I have no schematic. So wired microphone it is. And hopefully this sounds better. So we're going to go over this board over here. Now this is a board that's missing the PM Sleep S4L signal, and it's also it's missing a bunch of power rails as a result of that. So when you look over on the microscope, it should be obvious where the corrosion is. This is the only spot of the board that has any type of corrosion. And it doesn't really look like components are disgustingly bad. It doesn't look like they're destroyed, but there's just a minor bit of corrosion. So what this does in my brain, it gives me a little clue. It says, aha, so I'm missing this signal, and this is this this is what's going on. So when you poke around and you look around the board, you see that the, the corrosion is on this section, and this is the consequence. So if I have corrosion here, then the consequence is. Well, I'm not saying that this is always going to happen that way. What I'm saying is that I want you to start creating a little bank in your head, and I want you to have some some capability for analytical thinking and problem and uh, pattern recognition. So we move over to the schematic over here, and we see that those components are R1802, uh, C1802, C2233. So the components that have this little blotch of corrosion on them are pull-up resistors for these signals RTC reset and system RTC reset. And we also have this um, these capacitors over here to keep you know keep keep those uh, signals charged and we have some other resistors uh, pull up resistors for PCH intruder PCH inter VR men and when you see where these are going let's just copy and paste and see where these are going those are signals for the RTC circuit so now you kind of get in your head okay RTC circuit has something to do with PM Sleep S4L. So if I manage to clean this, or I ultrasonically clean this, and it works again, uh, then I will have an I will you know have the idea in my head that the RTC circuit has something to do with that. So now I know that this circuit, this thing right over here, is related to the issue of the PCH not putting out PM Sleep S4L. Now you know two or three years ago, I may have simply thought that RTC circuit literally is just for clock. Who cares? But the way you come to these conclusions, again, the way you come to them is not necessarily by by just uh, you know reading it and going, aha, the RTC reset circuit is indeed required. It's required because the manual says it's required to put out the power signals. No. It, it's, it, the manual doesn't tell you any of this shit. You have to infer it. This is why I don't often read manuals. This is why I find manuals to be such a complete waste of time in so many situations. Because the information that I'm actually interested in it's never in the manual. The st I, trust me, if there were manuals that answered my questions, I would happily read them all day long. The problem is that the manuals that I find are manuals that don't have answers to the questions that I'm asking. So what I have to do for myself is I have to create my own manual based on what's sitting in front of me. And I've done videos on this on the quarter fan spin and the art. I've done videos in the RTC circuit several times before, and you'll find them on this channel. But yeah, I mean, I just want to give you an idea because again, people think that I that I graduated the college where they tell you that the, that that the RTC circuit is related to no PM sleep S4L, and you know, no, that that, that that's not college. That that that's staring at the fucking board, and then you know. And I talked, and the thing is, I'm not just getting this information and these opinions just from myself. It's just, I talk to other people who do this for a living, and the people who are successful are the same way. They have an issue, they look around, they apply what they saw to what's going on, they analyze, then they jump to their own conclusion, because again, you have to jump to a lot of your own conclusions, because there's nobody there with a written down conclusion in the manual for you. And once you're done with that, you'll come up with a solution. So I'm going to ultrasonic this, and we'll see where it goes. And if I ultrasonic it, and that doesn't fix it, then I know exactly where I'm going to go back. All right, so let's take a look at this and see what happens now. So if I take my charger wire here and I plug it in, it spins. And let's see what it looks like. We just wheel my microscope over here. Dun, 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 dun. Still looks a little bit shitty. 
uh, since it looks a little shitty, I'll just be touching that up later on. But yeah, that this is pretty much how this type of troubleshooting works. Again, you know, you have a problem, you poke around to look at what you think is causing your problem, and you just go from there, and you, you try to make these associations in your head. Again, nobody starts out knowing what every single one of these things are. It's really about the willingness to poke around and figure it out. And I want to encourage you to do that with this channel. The whole point of this channel is to make all of this seem like common sense. So instead of it seeming like this advanced thing that you could never learn, it seems like something that, oh, I can do that. I don't want you to go into it being uninformed. I don't want you to go into it with the wrong tools. I don't want you to go into it with no knowledge, which is why I put up all this stuff. I don't want people watching one of these videos and then trying to fix tons of boards. That will end in tragedy. But the whole idea here is I just want you to understand how the troubleshooting process goes.